system. MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. We all hate potholes. I'll introduce you to the guys at Butte who are trying to get rid of them. Feels really good, looks really cool. You know, turning heads on the lift, on the chairlift all day. That's what Telemark skiers live for. You're going to love this one. Coming up, we'll show you what springtime Telemark skiing looks like at Big Sky. It involves your hands. Hmm. Crazy story. What we'll show that on one with there? you. Yeah, yeah. Kristen Merkel has that story coming up in a moment. Meantime, a beautiful morning here in southwest Montana. Chet Lehman, Matt Elwell with here. Jane uh, McDonald is off. Uh, beautiful warm days yesterday. Uh, killing off some of our snowpack, causing some flooding conditions, and yeah. now chilling out a little yeah, bit. A little. Uh, it's slowed down. Mm -hmm. The melt has, uh, for now, temperatures into the 20s uh, near the freezing mark mm -hmm. for most of the area as we're starting the morning. Uh, you look at Futurecast, uh, there are more showers on the way, and uh, we could see a pretty hefty snow again overnight tonight into tomorrow. Again, uh, temperatures are going to be a little cooler today. Daytime highs into the 40s. We'll see a few rays of sun for a few areas. A little snow flying in Butte as we're starting the morning. More shower activity throughout the day. It does include rain or rain snow mix. We have some heavy snow heading this direction. I'm going to break down where and when in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Matt. 633, we start in Butte. While some are dealing with high water, many mining city motorists dealing with some menacing potholes. Dan's John Amy was out with city crews on Tuesday, working hard to try to fill some of the hazards. It's that time of year in Butte when the city streets are plagued with the dreaded potholes. And city crews have been at it for the past month trying to fill as many of them as they can. But there's many factors that work against them. I've had a long, hard winter. We usually can get out there and, you know, fill potholes um, periodically, you know, throughout November, December, January. But um, we've been getting snow since December and it hasn't really let up. A pair of two member crews has been filling the city's potholes with a mix of hot oil and gravel in recent weeks. This year has been uh, a little difficult to stay on top of. Um, we get quite a few claims, um, you know, people breaking their, their tires and stuff like that. Filling potholes is a weather dependent task. Previously, we've had ice in the holes and the oil doesn't like to stick for that. Um, so we have to get all the ice out, all the water out in order for the holes to stay, uh, stay filled anyway, or else they blow out right after we, we get done filling them. Some streets take longer than others, like this intersection here at Paxson and Longfellow, which is cratered like the surface of the moon. Um, specifically, this street's pretty bad. It's, it's always been bad. Every, every winter, it just gets terrible. So hopefully, they can do something to mend it. People can alert the city of potholes by going to the Butte Silver Bow website to the Report a Pothole tab and fill out the online form. Crews say this year is very busy, so it could take a while before a pothole gets filled got to keep trucking and you know we can only uh, only fill so much you know throughout the day and and uh, you know we're working 10 hour days and uh, once we empty our tank we go fill up and we come right back out and, and continue to fill fill them up. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. 635 now new uh, data from data analytics companies show real estate investors have been buying up more of the housing market in the last few years than even before. Dan Grossman looks at the effects now for new home buyers. A coffee shop felt like a good place to conduct an interview of this magnitude because the information you're about to get over the next few minutes might need some help digesting. There's billions of dollars, trillions of dollars just sloshing around in the economy looking for places to go. Where do we, what are we gonna invest in? Real estate's a really, really good investment. Mike Delpretti is a global real estate tech strategist and a scholar at the University of Colorado Boulder. He says there's been a rise in companies buying single family homes to rent. How big and significant is this issue. It depends how you look at it. it. It is definitely an issue worth paying attention to. According to Pew Charitable Trusts, a nonpartisan and non-ideological research organization based in Philadelphia, investors bought nearly a quarter of single-family homes purchased in 2021. 
Since 2012, that number has been between 15 and 16 percent, making 2021 the fastest year-over-year -year increase in 16 years. Last year, in 2022, that number was even higher. The roots of the industry kind of came from the foreclosure crisis in 2000, 2008. Jordan Ash is the housing campaign and research director with the Private Equity Stakeholder Project. He points out what these investors are doing is not illegal. He says it's good business. He also agrees it affects the number of available homes for everyday people to purchase. According to CoreLogic, a data firm that analyzes financial and property information, only 15% of homes purchased by investors in March of 2022 were resold within the following six months. It's a bipartisan issue in terms of the concern that both Democrats and Republicans have expressed concern about it is because it really is directly impacting people's ability to achieve the American dream um, that people are being shut out. It's worth showing how these investors are splitting this pie. The core logic data shows of the 26% of homes that were purchased by investors in the third quarter of last year, 49% were small mom and pop investors, 33% were medium sized investors, 8% were large investors, and 11% were mega investors who own more than 1,000 properties. At its very base, it's going to make it more difficult for buyers to buy homes because, you know, for people like you and I, if we're looking to buy a home in Atlanta or Phoenix or any of these markets, we're competing against institutional buyers. They are, by definition, cash buyers. They don't have mortgages, they don't have contingencies, they've got briefcases full of cash ready to go. And their job, like the people you're bidding against, their job is to buy houses. So who do you think is going to win that bidding war? It's going to keep going back to the institutional investors. We went to the National Rental Home Council, a trade group representing many of these mega investors for comment. They told us that these mega investors own less than a third of 1% of all the housing in the country. However small, Ash is still wary of how much of an impact these mega investors may really have. There are entire communities that are now, you know, kind of being shut out where these corporate landlords are basically extracting the money that would have been, you know, from individual families being able to build equity. In late October, three Democratic House members from California introduced the Stop Wall Street Landlords Act. The bill would deny certain tax benefits to investors whose assets exceed $100 million a year. State legislators in Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona have also introduced their own bills since December that would limit the amount of homes investment companies could purchase. This is very nuanced. You know, institutional investors on the other side, they're a backstop to the entire housing market. When people can't afford to buy and sell houses, they're there. They're buying. That, that is important. It's a lot to take in, with many sides who don't all agree on the degree of impact. Hopefully the coffee allowed you to digest it with a bit more context, clarity, and understanding. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Denver. There is a lot to digest in that story. Thank you, Dan. Uh, 6 of 40 now. This is a fun one. Frisbee golf discs aren't only used for what you think. MTN's Kristen Merkel reports on how one big sky skier is giving us uh, the Frisbee a whole new meaning. I'm here in Big Sky Resort where one local is taking his passion for skiing to the next level by using Frisbee golf discs on his hands to get low on the slopes. I thought about when I was a kid once, my cousins had longboard sliding gloves and we used those on the roads back home and so I just thought, why hasn't anybody done that with skiing yet? Mario Carr is the Big Sky oh, Snow reporter and spends most of his time on the mountain. He learned how to ski at just 18 months old and this year has skied 141 days in a row. Car is a telemark skier, which is a technique that combines alpine and Nordic skiing using the rear foot to keep balance while pushing the front foot to create a carving turn in bindings that attach only at the toe. He says he wanted to find a way to get low while making his turns without using poles. The simplest solution so far has been frisbee golf discs with duct tape handles. Carr created this new way to ski using frisbee golf discs about three years ago. Since then, he's gained a following on Instagram for his skill and turning heads on the slopes. Feels really good, looks really cool, 
you know, turning heads on the lift, on the chairlift all day. That's what telemark skiers live for. He says a skill like this doesn't come without challenges. Really relying on the skis to make the carve happen. You have to be a good enough skier to get low enough to where you're actually dragging your hand on the ground. He's learning more and more every day. I'm figuring out new stuff almost every day. I'm riding with them. You know, sometimes it's just dragging one hand. Sometimes it's dragging two hands, spinning around. Carr has a patent pending on this idea of hand sliding while skiing and is hopeful he'll receive the official patent this year. In Big Sky, Kristen Merkel, NTN News. I guess you would call that the car carve. That's what I just called it. Okay. I don't know if that's what we'll they call it. Go with it. All right. We're going to take a break here on Montana this morning.